Every year here in Russia, thousands of people, civilians and reenactors, gather to celebrate different events, different moments of Russian and Soviet history. Now we are in Kutesela, at the region of Leningrad, performing a reenaction together with reenactors of the Red Army and the Finnish Army of Marshal Manirgin. Dorian Motovulak, an American citizen with Polish roots, reenacts the Red Army of the Soviet Union. Uh, when I was a small child in the late 1980s, American cinema, always the Russians were the bad guys. And it made me very interested. You know, movies like Red Dawn, Red Scorpion, Rocky and whatnot always portrayed Russians as the bad people. And I didn't understand why. I didn't know what the Soviet Union was. So it made me very interested to want to learn about the Soviet Union. Union. And then when I got older, I discovered that the Soviet Union lost upwards of 27 million people in World War II. And I realized that if it was not for the Soviet involvement in World War II, America would have lost a lot more than 600,000 people during the war. And this year marks 20 years that I have been reconstructing our KK. And I would not want to do anything else. It's, 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 it's a true love and a true passion for me, and it's a huge honor to come to Russia on real battlefields and get a chance to do real reconstructions in Russia. That's it. Alexandra Wimona. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, so tell me please, Alexandra, um, how did you get interested in historical reenaction? And uh, if it doesn't mess up that you are finishing the uh, reenact the Red Army? Uh, well, uh, it was some years ago when I started to study Russian language. So with that I was uh, like getting interested more into the culture and the food and the habits. And with that I got more interested in the history and it was just uh, when I started to like uh, read about Finnish history first. And then it was only the Finnish side. It was so boring. So when I was reading also like Red Army history, it brought everything together. It was so really interesting. So with the <laughs> Russian language, so like studying everything, started that. And I I have always been interested in military things. Very good. Um... This second uh, second question: uh, If the fact you are Finnish, uh, does it mess up maybe among your friends or among your family that you uh, renege the red on? Well, it's a tricky thing in uh, Finland. Some the younger generation is it's totally fine, but the older generation who still have the memories from the war and they they're like like not 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 the good thing and. I have been called like as a communist and Putin lover and <laughs> and like uh, everything other like a wolf bitch. That is a that is a certain uh, calling name in Finland. So, but my all my friends, even co-workers in work, are totally fine. But uh, yeah, some it's it's a. Okay. A little bit taboo still in Finland. I understand. And the last question: uh, If you recommend fin Finnishes to come Russia? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, just uh, don't get too much into vodka. <laughs> but uh, yes, yes, I absolutely recommend because uh, I was because this is my second time like a long time so I had been more time to like see and feel and talk with people and it's really really like uh, another world but the media is like terrible. everything is like so friendly and yeah it, I, it's experience you have to take okay.
Besides the experience of witnessing foreigners reenacting the Red Army, we also noticed a big number of Russians reenacting the Finnish Army. <laughs> Among Russians reenacting the Finnish Army, we spotted Finn reenacting the forces of his own country. My name is Jonas Lehikonen. I am from Lappeenranta, Eastern Finland, but now I am living in Helsinki, where I am studying at the university and I also have a job there. Uh, my uniform is model 1936 uh, Finnish summer tunic. Uh, the winter tunic, or like the all year round tunic, was uh, pretty much different and heavier. So in summertime we use a simple, uh, simple cut uh, summer tunic. It has two pockets in the front, uh, slings for like, and these. Uh, slings over there for the keeping the belt up because the Finns didn't uh, usually use the wire straps like uh, like the Germans did but we use just a belt just a belt to carry all our uh, all our uh, all our gear within like ammunition and the bread bag that was very important you carried your uh, extra ammunition there and grenades stuff and then you have your uh, belt bottle and it is used uh, to just carry water around and shovel well it's very complicated here I act in the Red Army. I'm myself from Brazil, from the city of Fortaleza. I played at this uniform many times at Airsoft Games. Today, what do we have here? Bebesha, 41. Bebesha was developed by the constructor, by the engineer Spagina. Stadion Pulemot Spagina, that is the machine gun of Spagina. Soviet engineer, it was highly used. Small Takes 72 rounds, very effective in close and long distance combats. Mostly at, uh, at close, actually. One of the advantages of the Pepe is that it doesn't have many problems with the mechanism. Exactly for that reason, Germans often got the Pepe is a trophy gun. We have the so-called Nalife. As you can see, we have the so-called Nakaliniki. Nakaliniki was used in order to protect your news from the contact with the land when you were, when you were like at the battlefields. We also have the so-called Gymnastyorka. Gymnastyorka from the word gymnastics. It's actually the same used by Russian peasantry. Russian, Russian peasants use the so-called Kasavarotka. Kasavarotka is related to this part of the uniform. It's basically the same thing adapted for military use. Besides that, what else do we have? The boots, of course, was very useful. This was one of the best weapons used by the Red Army. Why? Because it was not only used to dig. As you can see, very effective to dig. It was also used in order to search for landmines. It was used as well in order to break some... Break some branches in order to prepare a bonfire, and of course, it could be also used to defend yourself, like as a norm. Some soldiers spotted it within their clothes and used it in order to protect themselves from the attacks of bayonets, from the attacks of cutting weapons. As you can see, especially the hot, it's excellent. Some soldiers even use two of them. And of course, it's also used as a weapon. According to a famous writer from France, very well sharpened, show could pot, 
could simply hack a man into twice. You could defend yourself from the attack of a bayonet, you could simply used as a weapon. It was really, really feared by the Germans. And of course, we have everything that a soldier needs for the battle. Here we have a belt from Land Lease, by the way, delivered by the Americans. The quality is not very good, but here it serves our purpose. Quite often the reenactors acquire it because it's usually cheap. So, you just got acquainted with the uniform and the equipments of the Red Army. As you can see, here I'm using my pilotka, Cristiano, Brazilian blogger from Leningrad. Кутерселька в финской деревне, располагавшейся неподалеку от этих позиций. Сегодня на ее месте находится поселок Лебяжье, а во время Великой Отечественной один из вражеских редутов, который был частью оборонительной линии, опоясывающей весь Карельский перешеек. Именно здесь после двух лет позиционной войны развернулись активные боевые действия. Реконструкторы воспроизводят события 14 июня 1944 года, когда советские войска прошли на прорыв, нащупав слабое место. Нужно обороне гимнастерки из пулеметом Дегтярева на перевес – настоящая экзотика. Родина Кристиана Лимы – Бразилия, хотя душой и сердцем он уже давно в России. Очень напоминает моих армейских времен. Я также служил в бразильской армии. Там, правда, было гораздо сложнее, но очень интересно быть так близко к обмундированию и... Оружие Великой Отечественной войны, которые были использованы для уничтожения нацизма. 